Okay, here we uh, go. We're going to resume and uh, finish this ring here. I'm going to take, let's see, my wire that is pre done, and I'm going to solder it to my big four prong head. This is an eight millimeter four prong head that I got uh, probably from Rio Grande or somebody uh, like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I will solder it to this wire. There's a lot of different ways to do this. As I've started doing videos, uh, putting them on YouTube, just for the fun of it, to uh, give people an idea, I've got a lot of people telling me uh, I've done it wrong or I don't know what I'm doing. So uh, take it for what it's worth. And uh, this is what I'm going to do. I want to shape the end of this metal shank because it's flat and the head is round. So I'm just going to indent that round just a little bit. And I'm going to use any kind of little uh, grinding uh, stone that you have. I have a heatless wheel and it's ground down to just about nothing, uh, but it should be about the perfect shape to do what I want it to do. So now. looks pretty good just a little more and I want to do it on an angle like the head would be sitting and on the ring shank there's lots of different ways to do uh, ring shanks and solder them to heads and uh, I'm going to show you how I do it and uh, there's a hundred other ways to do it so this is what I'm going to do. I'll set my silver shank in my tweezers where I do a lot of soldering. I'm going to cut off just a little snippet of silver solder, easy solder. The less solder I use, the less chance I have of uh, overflowing into my pattern on my shank or uh, too much. But you have to have enough to fill it in and make it a, a good solder joint. So it's a it's practice that you'll get used to. I put my flux on there. I use uh, the handy flux for silver, and that works really well. Take me a second to get my torch over the first thing this morning. And I'm going to take that little piece of solder, turn it into a little ball, molten ball, and it's sitting uh, right on the very, uh, let's see if I can show you, right on the very tip of my pick. And I'm just going to heat this up. Hold it in place till I get it hot enough. And the solder will attach to the end of the shank metal. Now I'll solder my head in position. This is just me, but this is something that I learned over the years that I like. These are my tweezers that I use. Let's see if I can get them in a good... I like to bend the end of them flat a little bit so that they're not just straight. It gives me a lot more flexibility in holding things to the angle that I like to hold them when I'm soldering them. Okay, so now I'm just gonna, oops, 
drop it on the floor there. That don't work. I hope your lighting's still good for you. It went a little bit uh, darker on my screen, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to solder this in place. Dip it in the water. And it's not quite straight, so I'm going to change it just a little bit. I'm going to reflux it just uh, because. When I do stuff like this, I always rest my hand on my bench pin because I shake so bad, it would be a mess otherwise. So now I have one side soldered to the head and I'll wrap it around. I'll probably make this ring about a size 8, somewhere in there. So I've determined about where it will need to be to be a size 8. Cut it off and I'm going to do the same thing to this side and round that in so that it fits right. So now I've got it pretty nice and straight, or at least uh, the shank is sitting where I want it. And I'm going to solder it from the underneath side this time uh, so that I have less chance of getting solder on the pattern on the shank up here.
You can also cut off a snippet of solder and do it that way if you like. I do a lot of uh, uh, just feeding it in, but you have to be careful on silver because one side, uh, if you get the whole thing too hot on one, the other side, it'll just fall apart on you. That's soldered really nice. Now I'll take a ring mandrel. We've got it uh, rounded out, the head soldered in. What I would do at this point normally is throw it in some pickle and let it clean up a little bit. But the most important thing that I'm concerned about right now before I set this stone is I want to clean and polish on the inside of the head. It, you can't polish underneath the stone once the stone's set. So I'm gonna do that right now using some brushes and, and that, and I'm not gonna worry about the pickle uh, until a little bit later I can do it. So that's what I'll do now. I'm using a uh, steel steel wire brush at my Fordham and polishing up those prongs. That's good enough right now for the demonstration. I'll clean it up later and polish it up and show it uh, as a finished product. Like I said before, a lot of people like the GRS Benchmate and they can, uh, you know, put their ring in there, clamp it in, and work on it that way. To me, it's just a little bit harder, uh, a little bit slower on something like this. I do use this a lot for other kinds of stone setting. I'll put it in my ring vise. Like so. I have a a notch out of my bench pin where I can put my uh, ring vise and hold it steady to do what I want to do. So as like in figure one right right over there figure one two I'm gonna do the first cut uh, as in figure two So make them as uh, uniform as you can and the same distance down from the top of the prong as you, as you can. I don't think I can focus in close enough for you to see. That's why I drew the 
the pictures for you so you can understand what I'm doing. Now, as you know, with all stones uh, that are you know bigger, they're just shaped differently. Some of them have a deep belly, some of them are cut like a diamond, and some are cut thin. So the next step for figure three is all based on the shape of your stone. The top part won't be different, usually, but the bottom will. You may have to take it down farther for a, a deep bellied stone or uh, not quite so much for a, a shallow cut stone. So uh, what I'm setting today, I grabbed one out of the box that I thought would be really good. The head is for an eight miller, eight millimeter stone. This is an eight point one millimeter stone, and so it, you know, doesn't just drop down in like you would really like it to do. Uh, so I take that into account, and I'll have to bend my prongs out a little bit to get this to fit right. But when you set a stone this way, it's a lot easier than trying to do it with a burr, a different type of burr. The stone setting burrs, used to, I used to put them in there and start it up and it would chatter and bend all my prongs and drive me just crazy basically. So I'm gonna take out the bottom and the top portion of each one of these. It's looking really good. So what I'm going to do, I set the stone on top of there. It's too big to just drop down in. So I'm going to take my needle nose pliers, just take each one and bend the prong out just slightly. An easy way to do it sometimes is just set the stone upside down on your bench bin. And that looks like it'll be fine. So now the stone is sitting down where I want it to be. If it was a five millimeter stone or smaller, then I would use my needle nose pliers and bend the prongs over but I'm telling you what since uh, since I learned about the little little uh, pliers like this and you can adjust them out so I'm gonna go out to the second space it's just little channel locks and that it should be the perfect So I've gone around and I want to make sure that each prong is laid down tight against the stone on the top. And it's all done all the way around. A lot of times people will say,